I want to thank you, Administrator uh, Powers, for joining us here today. I've enjoyed working with you over the years as the United States continues to address the many challenges uh, that we face in the world today. USAID is the U.S. government's primary humanitarian and development assistance organization in the world. They are the people who bring food to starving children, bring medicine to the sick and dying, help rebuild schools and bridges and roads when war or natural disasters have washed them away. And we're seeing quite a bit of that uh, today. And that is our soft power. And that's why I think it's critical that USAID have a cohesive strategy to grow America's soft influence while using US taxpayer money as effectively and efficiently as possible. One of the biggest success stories of US assistance is PEPFAR. To date, over 25 million lives have been saved. The president of Botswana personally told me that PEPFAR has, quote, saved a generation from extinction. And at the same time, it serves as one of the America's best soft diplomacy tools. I'm pleased to say that PEPFAR has been reauthorized. The budget you have submitted to our committee has some good provisions to project American leadership. However, much of this budget reads more like a wish list than a strategic document to promote American leadership. The Chinese Communist Party poses a generational threat to the United States. And now more than ever, American diplomacy is critical to counter the CCP's growing influence. They use debt trap diplomacy through their Belt and Road Initiative, and alarmingly, to some extent, they are succeeding. In this great struggle for global balance of power, the choices are clear, freedom and democracy, or oppression and tyranny. Yet this budget seems to place a higher priority on DEI programs and combating CCP's malign influence. The budget includes $3 billion earmarked for, quote, inclusive gender equity and another $200 million for, quote, gender equity and quality action fund. Imposing these political ideologies is not uh, aid in my judgment. Now I'd like to turn to Afghanistan, where the Biden administration's chaotic and deadly withdrawal create a massive humanitarian crisis that we are dealing with today. We know for a fact that taxpayer funding aid is flowing to Taliban fighters and loyalists rather than suffering Afghan women and children. Hard fought gains to advance women's rights and promote democracy and stability in Afghanistan were wiped out by the decision to unilaterally withdraw. Today, Afghanistan is the most oppressive country in the world for women and girls. Girls have been banned from attending school. Women are banned from working for NGOs. This greatly diminishes the ability to get aid to women and children and the people who need it the most, and it further limits our oversight capabilities. The U.S. must adamantly oppose this treatment of Afghan women and girls, and we must work with our friends and allies to pressure the Taliban to lift these edicts. Turning to the Western Hemisphere, the crisis at our southern border is the worst I've seen in my entire career. I continue to believe that it is a direct cause and effect of this administration rescinding the migrant protection protocols known as Remain in Mexico. USA plays and must continue to play a critical role in combating the root causes of this migration. We need to turn off the magnet of open borders and the lack of enforcement of our immigration laws, which is creating this crisis at our border. So finally, Administrator Power, I want to thank you, though, for being uh, open and accessible uh, and listening to me. We may not always agree. We can agree to disagree, but we can always agree to have that conversation about what's most important for the American people. And I want to thank you personally uh, for that.